But what Alan goes and what really, again, struck me and impressed me and kind of shaped a lot of how I understood these things, he goes after what I, he would argue, I would argue, are the two main ideological props of white supremacy amongst European American workers. The two main arguments that even if people are getting ready to wage the good fight, you know, kind of help beat it back, help beat that effort back, help sap it, right? The idea that racism is innate, that's Winthrop Jordan's argument. But the second one is the idea that white workers benefit from white race privileges. If they benefit, why should they oppose it, right? And he argues instead, as I indicated before, that we have to understand these privileges as a poison bait, like a shot of heroin. Go on. The unthinking decision is Winthrop Jordan's, right? Sean, next one. The too few free poor to matter. Edmund, Edmund Sears Morgan is um, a professor emeritus at Yale, who was president of the Organization of American Historians, a leading American historian cited in publications recently in praise, right? Um, and or Morgan writes a, a book that got a lot of recognition for the writing on the colonial period, had, some much, had m many good aspects to it, but his core argument was that there were too, free, too few free poor Europeans and Americans in Virginia to matter. That's the case in St. Croix. That's not the case in Virginia, and we'll get into the statistics. That's not the case in the US, and I'm going to explain why, but it's got to do with all those European American laborers that are here. Um, go on, Sean. Morgan goes further, and I'm just going to mention this quickly for those who follow these historical arguments, because he puts forth something that you'll hear in the academy a lot, and he talks about the American paradox, the American paradox. And um, Alan says that whole argument is an assessment of white supremacism in a positive light. The essence of Morgan's thesis is that democracy and equality as represented in the De Constitution Declaration were made possible by racial oppression. Sean, next slide. Morgan writes, the slavery of Afro-Americans made possible indeed was essential for the emergence of the notion of equality as the fundament, and we've heard this throughout our education. Come one more, Sean. Racism made it possible for white Virginians to develop a devotion to the equality. Go back one, Sean. Just, you know, go back. Well, if slavery brought us all these liberties, mustn't have been such a bad thing, huh? If racism brought us all this good stuff later on, it mustn't have been, that's the argument that they're putting forth. Allen stands all of this on his head. When he talks about Bacon's rebellion, he, he argues rather than the, the um, slavery being the base, he goes, it was only by extending what were liberties in England as racial privileges in Virginia that the US, that the plantation bourgeoisie was able to impose the system of racial slavery and racial oppression. We'll get into that.